Reject stagnation. Reject the myth that learning is for young people. It's what you learn after you know it all that counts. Learn all your life from your successes, from your failures. Bad times have a scientific value. These are occasions a good learner wouldn't miss. What is it trying to teach me? Individuals who remain vital have learned not to be imprisoned by fixed habits, attitudes, and routines. We build our own prisons and serve as our own jailers. But if we build the prisons ourselves, we can tear them down ourselves. If we're willing to learn, the opportunities are everywhere. We learn from our work and from our friends and families. We learn by accepting the obligations of life, by suffering, by taking risks, by loving, by bearing life's indignities with dignity. You learn to bear with the things you can't change. You learn to avoid self-pity. You learn not to burn up energy and anxiety. You learn that most people are neither for you nor against you, but rather are thinking about themselves. You learn that no matter how much you try to please, some people are never going to love you, a notion that troubles at first, but is eventually relaxing. Among your obligations is an appointment with yourself. One of the most valuable things you learn is that ultimately you're the one who's responsible for you. You don't blame others, you don't blame circumstances, you take charge. If you're going to keep on learning, your surest allies will be high motivation and enthusiasm. People can achieve meaning only if they've made a commitment to something larger than their own little egos, whether to loved ones, to fellow humans, to work, or to some moral or religious concept. Confidence is built upon an experience of success. When we first begin any undertaking, we're likely to have very little confidence because we haven't learned from experience that we can succeed. We need to form the habit of remembering past successes and forgetting the failures. This is the way both an electronic computer and the human brain are supposed to operate. Practice improves skill and success. There is a time in every man's education when he arrives at the conviction that envy is ignorance that imitation is suicide, and that though the wide universe is full of good, no kernel of nourishing corn can come to him, but through the toil bestowed on that plot of ground which is given him to till. The power which resides in him is new in nature, and none but he knows what that is which he can do, nor does he know until he's tried. Trust thyself. Every heart vibrates to that iron string. No one can even estimate the number of people who live nervous, anxious, unhappy lives because they daily attempt the impossible, which is to be like someone else. There are people who don't realize the truth of Emerson's words that envy is ignorance, that imitation is suicide. He must have used the word suicide because we have to kill that which is natural in ourselves when we attempt to be like someone else. They need to recognize the truth also that the power that resides in them is new in nature, that it has never appeared before in just that way on earth, that if they'll learn about and develop their own powers, they'll have no need of envy or imitation. Envy is ignorance because it means a person is ignorant of his own powers and abilities, his one-of-a-kind natural talent. He's never looked within himself for his own road to greatness but instead seeks it in the lives of others. And when he fails to succeed, as do those he envies, as fail he must because he can't possibly be exactly like them, his image of himself shrinks. Not understanding that he is unlike those he envies, he doesn't realize that this simple fact lies at the bottom of his failure. Nor does he understand that he can be as successful as anyone on earth if he will build upon that power that resides in him. As Emerson put it, the power which resides in him is new in nature, and none but he knows what that is which he can do, nor does he know until he's tried. This is why a parent is off base when he says to a child, why aren't you like so-and-so, like a brother or some model child? 
Look what he's doing. The parent doesn't understand that it's a human impossibility for the child to be like so-and-so and to do what he does in the same way. Instead, a parent would be wise to say, don't worry about so-and-so. He's found his strength and he's building on it. Now, you have a strength of your own. And when you find it, you can build it just as high. Trust thyself. Every heart vibrates to that iron string. When a person finds himself, when he stops imitating and envying others, there's something in his nature that says to him, this is it. You found your road at last. Real success is a matter of finding yourself and building upon what you find, just as of those whom so many envy. Every person is born to be a star at something. The purpose of his or her life is to discover it and then to spend his or her years building upon that plot of ground it was given to him and to her to till. With such an abundance of everything, we're often like children standing in front of a mile-long candy counter or a person looking at a really good restaurant menu. How do you make a selection from such abundance? If you decide on one thing, you're passing up all those other things. As a result, many people choose impulsively, often, too, by getting too many little things, they dissipate their means, and thus they're unable to obtain larger, more important things. So it's wise to spend some time thinking about just exactly what we will want from the years ahead of us. What will comfort and enrich us on snowy or rainy days? What will cause us to get up in the morning with interest and enthusiasm in our later years? And to what do we wish to commit ourselves for at least a part of our days that's big enough and interesting enough to keep us happily occupied for the rest of our lives? A person who lacks confidence in himself is a person who has never really tested his powers. A test to be valid must include a whole lot more than one or two tries. Imagination is everything. That's everything, not to be confused with some things. Imagination is everything. I remember reading in the book Papillon that incredible tale of multiple escapes from the French penal colony in French Guiana, that no matter what the hardships were, or how wretched the escapees' lives. They were filled with joy as long as they were moving toward freedom. Pain, suffering, starvation, exhaustion, constant danger were all worth bearing as long as they were moving toward freedom. And this is why we need to reaffirm our goals on a regular basis, why we need to make sure we know what it is we're moving toward. It's when things go hardest, when life becomes most trying, that there is greatest need for having a fixed goal, for having an air castle that the outside world cannot wreck. <laughs>